Hello, I'm Dr. Mary Ann Teitelbaum, and today we're going to take a look at cortisol using an ancient and a modern perspective. Nowadays, there's a lot of emphasis placed on cortisol levels, which can be tested on blood work. Let's take a look and see why everyone is so interested in seeing what their cortisol levels are nowadays and what it can mean if they're out of balance. The adrenal glands release cortisol when you're under stress, and it can create lots of problems if the stress continues on a chronic basis. The ancient doctors of Ayurveda talked about this at great lengths in their textbooks, although they called it vada being out of balance, which means that there are different ways of describing the same thing. Nowadays, we speak in terms of organs and glands using modern scientific terminology. For example, we might talk about how the adrenal glands release cortisol when they're stressed, and how too much of it in your bloodstream can create different health problems. But the ancient doctors talked about it at a deeper level, and they took it one or two steps further, back to the root cause. It's not so much that the adrenal glands are the problem, they're more the victim. The driving force behind the whole situation is that if the vata goes high, then it stimulates the adrenal glands. And if you remember, vata is the principle in our bodies which governs the movements of thoughts through the mind, the movement of blood circulating, the movement of food churning in the stomach. In fact, it controls all bodily movements. Vata is also the element of quickness. So if you rush through the day and you're doing everything too quickly, or having too many thoughts, or overanalyzing everything, then you'll be continually disturbing your vata, which in turn pushes your adrenal glands to dump cortisol. The ancient textbooks said that vata disturbances can shrink the body's physical channels. And guess what? So can cortisol. So let's think what might happen if some of your physical channels shrink down. Well, if you shrink the channels that carry blood, such as the arteries, the blood pressure can go up. Or if you shrink the channels that are carrying toxins out of the body through the bowel movement, urine, and sweat, those toxins can now not get out, so they turn around and they settle in the joints, causing arthritic pain and swelling. This is why your whole body aches and feels like you're retaining fluid after periods of stress. Vata disturbances are known to affect the quality of sleep since vata is so light that if it becomes elevated, the sleep becomes light and it becomes hard to fall asleep and have a deep rejuvenating sleep. If cortisol is in your bloodstream at night after a stressful day, then you'll also have a hard time falling and staying asleep. The ancient doctor stated that high vata can emaciate the tissues of the body. And this is especially true with the bone tissue, where many of the tall, thin vata types who wind up with either too much stress or a very light diet, like a vegan diet, they'll usually wind up with osteopenia or osteoporosis. And it turns out that cortisol does this as well. When cortisol levels are high, it signals the thyroid gland to stop making its hormones, while at the same time preventing the conversion of the thyroid hormone T4 into T3, which means the inactive version into the active version, which can then be taken up and used by the cells. And if you recall from my book, Healing the Thyroid with Ayurveda, when the thyroid gland becomes weak, then calcium absorption into the bones is impaired, creating osteopenia or osteoporosis. This again is just another way of stating the same thing in both ancient and modern terminology. When vada goes out of balance, we crave sweet, sour, and salty foods, and just food in general because eating can pacify vada. In the same way, if cortisol levels are high, signals are sent to the brain that you're hungry and you need to eat to keep up with the demands for this high energy you're creating. You therefore end up overeating to satisfy these hunger signals and to balance your vada. The ancient doctor said that in general, vada was what they called the leading dosha, which means that once vada gets disturbed, it will eventually push pitta and kapha out of balance. So many disease processes start with high vada as the initial underlying imbalance, which, if not addressed early on, can slowly blossom into more complicated imbalances, which means that if you're existing in a state of high cortisol for too long, lots, lots of diseases can result. Another way we could put it is that if you're existing in a constant state of fight or flight, we all know that the fight or flight response was meant for an occasional stressor which helps us to run from the danger. But if we're always rushing through the day and this becomes the norm, 
then its effects can devastate the body. When you're rushing and cortisol is constantly being pumped out by your adrenal glands, the cortisol triggers a flood of glucose that supplies an immediate source of energy to your muscles. And at the same time, it prevents the production of insulin so that the glucose or blood sugar won't be stored in the muscles, which is what insulin's job is, but instead will stay in the bloodstream so that it's available to the muscles, which means that over time, this high sugar remaining in the blood can make your blood sugar go up. But high vata and high cortisol levels can upset digestion as well. And this is because under times of fight or flight, the blood is shunted out of the digestive organs and into the extremities so that you can run from the danger. At the same time, the digestive system shuts down so that the body can use its energy to run from the threat, preventing you from digesting or absorbing the food. This is why many people develop digestive problems like ulcers and colitis when they're stressed, and then these symptoms clear up once the stress is gone. And when vata goes up, your apana moves up. Remember, apana is the subdosha or the subsection of vata, which resides in the intestinal region, and it's responsible for the downward flow of food in your gut. Now, if apana moves up, it can shut down your digestion and create problems, such as a hiatal hernia as the energy keeps pushing the stomach up into the diaphragm eventually weakening the lower esophageal sphincter and creating a hernia. We've all had times in our lives when we were severely stressed by some bad news, and directly after that we developed a head cold or other respiratory infection. This is because cortisol shuts down the immune system. There are bacteria and viruses in every breath you take, just waiting to gain entrance into your body at the first sign of immune system weakness. When we're stressed and our vata goes high and we begin dumping cortisol, the magnesium flushes instantly out of the body. And since magnesium is responsible for over 300 bodily functions and enzyme systems, pretty much anything can happen when magnesium goes low. For one thing, you can develop panic attacks as more magnesium is dumped out, making you more nervous, causing more cortisol to be released, and so on until this vicious cycle ends up in a panic attack. Low magnesium can also cause high blood pressure and headaches, hardening of the arteries, irregular heartbeats, and arthritis in the joints, since one of magnesium's hundreds of jobs is to keep the calcium from depositing into the joints. So once magnesium goes low, the calcium can infiltrate into the joints, causing pretty intense joint pain. So now you can see why the ancient doctors prescribed twice as many remedies for vata imbalances as compared to pitta and four times as many for kapha imbalances. It's imperative that you identify that you are in fact in fight or flight or are walking around with a vata imbalance. And until you do so, your healing won't be as deep and effective. I mention this because the majority of my patients have severe vata imbalances and they're stuck in fight or flight and they're releasing too much cortisol on a daily basis. They contact me and ask me for any herbs I might have to help all their ailments. I start them out on our wonderful herbs, then we go over the diet and the cleansing techniques. But what I've found through the years is that these patients are looking for the cure outside of their bodies, which is there to some extent in the therapies I just mentioned. But the real truth is that until they can identify that they are their own worst enemies, perpetuating their vata imbalances as they continue to rush through the days, go to bed late, and respond adversely to all the stressors that come their way, as long as they don't realize that they also play a huge part in their healing, they cannot fully escape their health issues. Two very successful patients, the very successful patients and those who overcome their health problems the best are those that can stand back, check in with their body throughout the day, and identify when they're talking too much or too rapidly or might be multitasking or doing some things very quickly. And when they realize these things are happening, just create a habit to stop them in their tracks. By constantly reevaluating your state of vata throughout the day and nipping it in the bud when it starts to go high, it becomes a habit that you can break where eventually you will slow down, you will learn to balance the vata, prevent the release of cortisol, and allow your body to fully heal itself as it gently slides out of fight or flight, 
into a more balanced state of being, which can finally pave the way for true healing to take place. And of course, there are dozens of herbs to help one get out of fight or flight, in addition to dietary changes, meditation techniques, breathing techniques, marma and massage therapies, magnesium baths, and exposure to nature, all of which can help reduce your vada. So I hope the message is loud and clear in this video. Whatever your health problem is, first learn what vada is and all the ways you can work to reduce it so that you can also be part of your healthcare team. It's wonderful that there are so many natural ways to bring balance back to your body, but don't forget that you must also play a role in healing yourself by keeping your vada balanced, which will result in lowering the cortisol levels, which will ultimately reverse and prevent all kinds of bad health trends. Thank you.